See, see this, this is real clear. And then it says, then it says, so that it should be manifest, so that the people's faith will not stand in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. In other words, so that when that power is manifest, people will know that wasn't that man, that was God. That's right. Who will give the glory? God. God. They're going to know that it, it, that was, that, that, yeah, that was the vessel, but God was talking. God was saying something to me. God was doing something with me. You know, that's what God wants. He wants them to know it was Him. Yes. Amen? Yes. He wants them to know. Yes. And, and so, what I'm saying is, um, as best as we can, you know, I'm, I'm going to be trying to teach as many people in this church that want to know how to minister the baptism with the Holy Spirit to people. Because the next best thing you can do after getting somebody born of the Spirit is getting them filled with the Spirit. If you can get them filled with the Spirit, boy, I mean, that's after salvation. Now you, now you have empowered them so that they can operate in power. You know? They're saved, praise the Lord. But, but to be able to operate in power, that's, that's what's going to really get productive. Now, having said that, and of course, oh, I got to give you this description. It's in my notes. Having said that, you know, it shows you that what God is saying is, I want you to get in power. I want you to have this power. Why? Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. He said, let your light so what? Shine. Before what? Men. Men. See? He wants your power to be manifest. Yeah, this is all connecting, right? Yes. Let your light so shine before men that they may see. See. See your good works. That's manifestation, right? Yes. But then it says, to the glory of God the Father, which is in heaven, right? Yes. And it, see, see what I'm saying? So this is a partnership. And God wants to empower you, and he wants to empower me, and he wants to put us on display, and he doesn't mind that the power working through us is manifest. He doesn't mind that we shine. He doesn't mind that we get the credit, as long as he gets the glory. Amen. I mean, they can remember that it was, you know, you, that it was you that God used. Mm -hmm. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with that. Brother Darrell go down there and he got one of them poems going and everything. They're like, man, can I get a copy of that? You know, no problem. But 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 he knows and they know it was the anointing. Yeah, the anointing was in that poem and the anointing was in that poem. Yeah. The anointing was moving through those songs. And you know what I'm saying? That's what it is. All my wonderful, all the psalmists over here, praise the Lord. The anointing was moving through a, through them all, and God's giving the glory. Sister Ned was on fire on Sunday, huh? Hey, was, she, was she on fire? Was she on fire? Hey, and what and what happened? Y'all can see the anointing, huh? Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. It's just that God was being glorified, huh? Yes. And and you know the interesting thing about that? I I really uh, sometimes I do pay attention to what the song is gonna be, but I didn't know what the song was gonna be, but that was the exact song that needed to be sung at that time. You know, my help, all my help. And then there was anointing at the end of the service of people who just needed mm -hmm. special help from the Lord. And so, again, God was glorified. All right, let's look at this. this verse 9. Um, verse 9. Who's going to help me ask God with some reading? Who, who'd like to do some reading? Raise your hand. Who'd like to do some reading? Okay. Yeah, we're back in Acts. I'm sorry. Acts chapter 1, Acts chapter 1, verse 9. Okay. Is it on? Yeah. The song. 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 The uh, stop right there. Now, what was the very last thing 
that Jesus said before he left the earth. It was verse 8. And he basically said, when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, you'll get some power to be my witnesses throughout the whole world. Now, that was the last thing Jesus said in the earth. I mean, you know, I've asked this question to people many times. Well, I said, you know, I asked it like this. I said, what was the last thing that Jesus said um, in the earth, when he was in the earth? And usually people say, you know, it is finished. Into thy hand, for I commend my spirit. But that was those are the last things he said on the cross. But this is the last thing he said before he left the earth. How do we know? Because because she just read verse nine. Read it again. My nice close to you. And turn me down a little bit. Go ahead. Uh -huh. Go ahead. Now when he had spoken these things, while they watched, he was taken up. And a cloud received him out of their sight. See, and we and when he had spoken these things, mm -hmm. translation, and right after he said that, what happened? Yeah. While they were watching, he was taken up. Now, this is interesting. While they were watching, that means that we know they are not only eyewitnesses of his resurrection. But they're eyewitnesses of his ascension. In fact, here's an interesting point. They really, they, they didn't, this is interesting, they didn't, they weren't eyewitnesses of his actual resurrection, meaning the process of the, they were witnesses of his resurrected body. But they were exact witnesses of his ascension. Yes. I mean, it says while. It didn't say they saw him uh, raised from the tomb. It just said they saw him, you know, afterwards on the third day. And he comes to the, you know, he comes to the upper room or whatever. And they see his resurrected body. But here, they're actually eyewitnesses of him being taken up while they beheld him. It's good that they didn't look look around somewhere else and, and watch what was going on on the other side of the road or something like that. This is why. Am I right? Yeah. In fact, it says the cloud received him out of their sight, right? First, read verse 10, please. Verse 10. Uh, from the newly translation, it says, and they still had their eyes fixed on the sky. Stop. They're still looking up. He's, he's been taken up right in front of them. So they didn't blink. They didn't look away and everything. So they still had their eyes fixed. Go ahead. They still had their eyes fixed on the sky as he went away. When he had gone away, they saw him and stood beside him. And stop, said, stop, stop. So they're looking at Jesus. He's being lifted up right before their eyes. They never took their eyes off of him because they kept looking up and then it says suddenly two men appear. Well, they don't know where the men appear from because they were looking up. Right? Yes. And, and now, before these two men appear, what is it that caused them to no longer see Jesus? Yes. Clouds. Anybody understand kind of how they explain it, what happened? He, he's taken up, and it, and, 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 and yeah, it, it implies that the clouds became thick, almost like a fog, and then he just, they, and they just couldn't see him anymore after that. It became very cloudy, almost to the point of almost like foggy, and they just couldn't see it anymore. And, but they, but even though they still couldn't see him, they still looking up. So they still looking up. They're like, "Come on now, maybe, maybe I might be able to see him one more time." They still looking up. I lift my eyes up to the hill. <laughs> With help, my help, I'm looking up. Somebody, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, right. They, they're still looking up. Huh? They're still looking up. And all of a sudden, here come these what? Two men in white apparel. What's apparel? Clothing. Clothing. All right. Who are the two men? Angels. Yes, it's 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 pretty well uh, common a conclusion that by theologians that those are angels. Can you read verse eleven now? And said, Galileans, why are you standing there looking up at the sky? This Jesus who was taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way that you saw him go to heaven. Okay, let's talk about that for a second. Let's talk about verse 11 for a minute. <clears throat> Two men. Uh, how can they be angels if they were men? Taking a human form on earth. Angels take on human form or physical form because we're in this physical natural realm, right? And that's what they have to do to in order to operate in the natural. Uh, why two? They always appear, they always appear so one, one can witness the other. Two, two, two is a number of confirmations. Two is a number. Two can be a, two can be a number of choice, but it can also be a number of confirmations. Because the Bible says by two or three witnesses, let every word be established. That's, I believe that's the right. All right. Uh, which actually, well, that's another thing. Let's, uh, so, even though they're, they're, look, they appear as men, and then they have natural, they have natural, apparently they appear to have natural bodies, and they have this apparently natural apparel, we still feel that they're angels, and what are some of the reasons that we probably believe that they're angels? Who can chime in on that? Yeah. Because of what they said. Because of what they said. Same. Well, what did they say? They, they said the same thing is that just he go up is going to come back the same way. Okay. So the first thing Sister Abe says, we believe they're angels because they had some, some knowledge, some supernatural knowledge. They were telling them, well, let's take it back for a second. First of all, it was just the, uh, it, and you can put that on high if you want to. I have them on low. Is anybody cold? Y'all cold? Mm -hmm. If you, who's cold? Raise your hand. Cold people, raise your hand. <laughs> All right. You can put some of the heaters on high because I have them on low, brother. If you'll help me out. You don't want to heat on you. Okay, so they're fine over here. Put it on high over here and put it on high on her over there. All right, so the, the angels, because angels, because it looks like they had some, some supernatural knowledge, huh? Now, when the disciples were there and they were looking up in the sky, they, there was nobody else around at the time. It was just the apostles, right? And then all of a sudden these two guys appeared and they got this uh, apparel on, and then what was it about this uh, this apparel? What does white symbolize? Purity. So purity, and we, in the book of Revelation, we, we see that that's a consistent sign of this angelic purity. But Sister Abbe is right, they say some things, and they say this Jesus will right away they're jumping right into their conversation. Somebody just appears out of nowhere, and they just start all of a sudden talking about Something that they wouldn't know unless they've been standing there. But they say this Jesus, who, what, who was taken from you into heaven, will come back in the same way. That's some higher knowledge, yes. Well, because I wouldn't say because Jesus had already disappeared. Mm -hmm. So for them to say to for the two men or the two angels to say <coughs> that you know. Why are you gazing? He was already gone, and then they, and then they went on to say the same Jesus, you know. So that means that they weren't there when he disappeared, you Excellent. know. So Excellent but obviously point. they knew. Excellent point. Mm. Excellent point. If, if they just showed up, he was already gone. How they know what they were looking right. at? Mm. How did they know who they were looking at? Why would they assume that you know? It was, how would they know about Jesus? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. That's an extra point here. That's an extra point. We, we can start with that. I was actually waiting for somebody to start with that. Because it says, which also said, you men of Galilee, or he said, Galileans. That's the first thing they said. Right. So if some stranger just walks up all of a sudden, how do they know who they are? I mean, that's very particular. Now, why was that important if you said Galilean, Jess? Well, <coughs> Galileans have a certain way about them, you know, like different people do. And, and, and in fact, the scripture even says that, the scripture even says uh, at one point that they had a certain accent and speech. But in this particular case, why do you think it is? Because they weren't in Galilee. They were down south in, in Jerusalem by Bethany. Right. Just south of everywhere where, we, right. where they're from. They, they were in, that's right. They were in the southern region. They weren't from around there. Okay, there you go. There you go. They were, they were in Judea. They were in Judea. And if I'm a stranger and I just have to come up on you, I might say, you know, what y'all Judeans looking at? Or what y'all looking at? Just like that. But to be specific and say, if we're down here, somebody come up and say, what you San Francisco is looking at? You know, it's like, how do you know I'm from San Francisco? You know, that kind of thing. So it was like what we would call a word of knowledge. Yes. This, this is all a, a word of, of knowledge, right? <clears throat> word of knowledge is knowledge that you could not have in your natural mind. It's super knowledge. It's, it's, it's higher than what you could normally know in your natural intellect, right? Uh, so they come, they know they're from Galilee. Then they come, they know who they're looking at. They, and then, they, then they say, well, the same Jesus that was taken from you, and now they, go, now they know they're talking about Jesus, but they said he was taken from you. They give, it's a lot of knowledge and information that they would not normally have as just a passing by. Then he says, same Jesus was taken from you into heaven. Now he's going to tell them where he was taken from you. He's in heaven. He's telling them because they don't know. Then he says, well, come back in the same way that you saw him go to heaven. Now, question. What does that mean? That he'll come back in the same way. Um, hands. 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 What? It means what? And what is that? And what is that? The rapture when it comes back. Well, the rapture, remember the rapture, Jesus doesn't come down together. He, 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 he raptures us up or calls us up to the clouds to be with him in the cloud. But, but talk to me now. What does it mean? I, I mean, this is really, you know, I, these are questions. I'm asking you questions that I ask myself. What does it mean to say? The same Jesus that went to heaven will come back in the same way. Isn't that what it says? I'm thinking just as quickly as he went up, he'll come back down. And just as grandly as he went up, he's coming back. So we'll be like in awe, like whoa. Okay, that's a good. That's good. Let's, it says, the same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner. Or another translation says, in the same way. So one of the things Reverend said, oh, quickly, because they looked and he was gone. That's a good point. Anybody else have one? She's got one. She's got one. She's got one. Her first. She's got one. Then go ahead. What, what else? Those who are looking for his appearance shall see him. That's said somewhere in the scriptures. So he will come back to those who are seeking and looking for him. And when he was caught up in the cloud, you're saying it's kind of like, like, a, so sorry. like a fall. Uh, but they were still looking up, beholding, looking for Jesus. So I think it's kind of like he comes to back to each of us, but I know he's coming back, and, and but the world might not see him. Those who are not looking for him won't see him. But they were looking up. They still were looking for him. Okay. All right. Was, so, so she says it will be quick. You says it will be up. Yeah. And you're saying that it will be for those who uh, no, him. Go ahead. Well, my thought is similar to what Reverend said. Uh, how many people can just float up 
in the air, period, anyway. So as enamored as everyone was in watching him ascend, he's going to come back with the same type of power or the same type of miracle. Okay. All right. That, that makes sense. The same, the same, the same, the, with the same shock and awe, with the same power, the same um, manner of, of that he... Uh, I'll pass it to her after that, then you go ahead. Okay, I was just thinking, you know, uh, in the same manner and speedily and, you know, um, where no one is expecting him, just like the way he went up, okay. he's going to come back. Like, but he's also going to come back in the same place. Yes. Yes. Very good. Very good. You got it. In the same, within this, with the same kind of spirit and power, with the same kind of quickness and coming back from heaven and coming down on Mount Olive. Okay, that's good. Okay, hold on. She got she got you first. Go ahead. That's what I was getting ready to say. So he's supposed to descend back at the Mount of Olives. Yes. In some modern day time, whether it's our time or time after ours. Like, he's going to be there. So how will all the world see or know? Because he's going to be just like he was physically there and went up and they saw him because they were in the vicinity to see him. Like, how does that transfer to all throughout the entire world and every continent? Well, first, well, first of all, first of all, First of all, remember, remember that, uh, I just want to make sure we know, we remember one thing. Remember the difference between the rapture and the second coming, right? The second coming means just that, second coming to earth. Jesus' first coming right. meant, so he was on earth right here, the so then he goes up. Right. So at some point he's going to come down, and that's going to be the second coming to earth, okay. and her point was really right on that the that the landing point, the touchdown point, is going to be on Mount Olives, where he's going to physically come back to Earth. Now that's the second coming, and that happens after the rapture. But but this whole concept of uh, uh, that everyone shall see him, uh, that could happen in in certain ways. I mean, we've got, right now, our technology is such that every time something happens, like a rocket is shot off or something like that, with CNN and everything else, everybody's seeing it all at one time. Everybody in the whole world is not going to be at Mount Olive, but Jesus coming in the sky could be seen by, I mean, there is a scripture that says, uh, keep talking and I'll find it, that every eye shall see him. Mm -hmm. 